Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you very much. Um, our theme tonight is Thanksgiving. How appropriate. Uh, we're going to follow the order of worship fun on, on our screens. Everything should be up there. Um, and if you're joining us here as well, if you're streaming, um, streaming live, you can click connect in the menu to, to fill out our connect cards. But if you're here today in person, um, if you could just fill out one of those connect cards in, in your pew, that would be lovely. God's blessings in our worship. Please stand. You're standing. <laughs> Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. O Lord, maker of all things, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. We praise you for crowning the fields with your blessings and enabling us once more to gather in the fruits of the earth. Teach us to use your gifts carefully, that our land may continue to yield its increase. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Please be seated. All of our scripture readings for this evening highlight the fact that God is the giver of all of our gifts, both physical and spiritual blessings that we receive from him, and so therefore he is worthy of our thanks and our praise. The first lesson is from Genesis chapter 8. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our psalm.
Our second lesson for this evening is from James chapter 1. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, if you have prepared a list of thanksgiving, um, you may bring that forward, and you can just come up the center aisle and place it in the basket in the front. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel for this evening is from Luke chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next hymn.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text this evening comes from the very psalm that we spoke of and had response in the beginning of our service, Psalm 100. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, with, thanks, with Thanksgiving, some people enjoy the simple time away from the office or school to just, just regroup mentally. Uh, some people love the gathering of, of family and friends around good food and, and good drinks. Some people, like me, finally give in to listening to holiday music and watching holiday movies. But it probably won't start till tomorrow. Thanksgiving can mean so much for, for so many different people. But what is Thanksgiving to you? Either way, I bet you feel it. I bet you feel the pressure to be thankful at this moment. After all, it is Thanksgiving. And for the lot of us who are coming into this holiday, holiday at like a million miles an hour, busy as bees, for many of us, we probably honestly haven't even thought of it. <laughs> thought about what it means to be thankful, except if you made a list and brought it up here today. But for many of us, we just even haven't even had the time to think about, what am I thankful for? And that's why I liked hear, hearing about this one tradition at, at Thanksgiving of this one family who, they just go around person by person around the, the Thanksgiving dinner table, and each person goes around and says that this is what I'm thankful for, and this is why I'm thankful for but even though Thanksgiving is very much, well, I'll just call it a corporate American holiday, it does have a lot of biblical truth to it, especially the fact that it is good to just stop to think and to be thankful. But ultimately, the question always remains for me, who are you thanking? Some things that I'm thankful for, have a, a direct person or even a direct company that I can go to and I can thank, I am thankful for fudge-covered, peppermint-sprinkled JoJo cookies from Trader Joe's. <laughs> I love them so much. This will not be the first time that you hear me talk about this. And unfortunately, it's a holiday thing, so I only get to get them like once a year. So next year... You're going to hear how I'm thankful for him again. But, but with those cookies, you know, I can go to the, the original maker. I, can, I could go to Trader Joe's. I could just be thanking these people wearing, you know, Hawaiian shirts. They don't know what I'm talking about. But at least I can go and thank somebody. But then things get a little bit more complicated. Uh, who do I thank for family or friends and why would I thank them if they're obligated, <laughs> you know, if they're obligated to be my family? Well, why should I be thankful for a friend who never returns the favor? Maybe I'm the friend and they're not. Who do I thank for my job? My boss? You guys, I guess, for me. <laughs> thank you. You know, I'm sure some of you may say even that you're not thankful for certain things, like politics, even though I'm thankful that political ads are over. You may say that I'm not really thankful for the, the particular leaders of, of certain organizations. Maybe many of us even wonder, what really is the point of Thanksgiving? You know, besides a, a day off of work or a day off of school, it's easy for us to, to think much like the world when it comes to Thanksgiving because we just don't know why we're here, what's going on, what are we doing here. The, the world can't even define what Thanksgiving is 
or who or what to be thankful for and why. But today, later on at the end of our sermon message, you're going to hear from Psalm 100. And the psalm writer speaks specifically to us believers in God. And the psalm writer gives us a reminder of what thanksgiving is. Not just why I'm thankful for something. Not just what I'm thankful for, but who I'm thanking. Who I want to say thank you to. But when you hear Psalm 100, you're going to probably sound, say it all kind of sounds like all these other psalms. And I realize that we all know that we want to talk about thanking God, right? I know that, that you know that I'm talking about thanking God here. And the psalm writers do too. You hear Psalm 100 and it says, thank God. And all the other psalms say, thank God. Just, just listen to some of these other psalms right before Psalm 100. It says, Come, let's shout joyfully to the Lord. Shout triumphantly to the rock of our salvation. That's Psalm 95. Psalm 96. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. It's starting to sound alike. Psalm 97. Be glad in the Lord, ye righteous ones, and give thanks to his holy name. Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has performed wonders. His right hand and holy arm have won him victory. Psalm 99. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. It's like, okay, it all just kind of sounds the same. Obviously, we thank God. He's awesome. He's big. Okay, great. And as much as we hear it over and over again in the Psalms, to praise and thank God, I think it's a reminder that we know in general that it's good to be thankful. We know that the things that we are thankful for but do we always remember the who? And so the psalm writers drill it home again and again, time and time again, that th Thanksgiving begins not with your eyes, with seeing things, but with your heart, seeing God for who he really is. And I know that sounds painfully obvious to say that God is God. But we can be painfully and sinfully blind to that sometimes. It's the reminder that I am not God. My job is not God. My emotions are not God. They do not dictate my life. Politics nor the Constitution are my God. I mean, just think about how different your world would be if those things were actually your God. If they were the things that guided all things for your good, I guess we could say, and guided all things for your eternity. That's scary. <laughs> That's scary to think about. That would not be good. And yet so often, that is how we function, as if those things are our gods. That's why we usually aren't thankful. Instead of being thankful, we are usually entitled, as if we deserve these things in our lives. And then when we don't get those things, we feel anxious, anxious that, that things aren't going my way, anxious that things aren't going according to plan, anxious that I don't have this and I don't have that. There was actually a Christian uh, by the name of Paul, who wrote a letter to other Christians in a city called Philippi. And at that time, he was imprisoned for basically being a pastor, for preaching the gospel. You know, of all people, he should have been cursing out God. He should have been cursing out the name of Jesus and Christianity. He should not have been thankful. But instead, he wrote this to the to the. Philippians, where he said, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Paul connects not being anxious with thanksgiving and prayer. 
And so thanksgiving leads me not to be entitled or anxious because I'm reminded that, that God's in charge, that God is all-powerful, but even more so that his love is faithful and that he provides all things for us richly. And knowing that, that God continues to, to really just throw out all of these blessings toward us, just richly, especially the spiritual ones. That helps me to focus on God as the giver and not on me and my mopey self. It helps me to see that, that the Lord is our God, guiding all things for our eternal good. That's why the psalm writers sing it over and over again, sing these joyful songs to the Lord because he's made us, he's redeemed us, and he continues to just give us these blessings. Although we were once locked out of God's presence because of our sin, God sent Jesus, the good shepherd, to lead us back to God. And because of Jesus, we now get to stand in the presence of God and just say, thank you. We can be confident that nothing will separate us from his love. Because Jesus promised that that no one will take the sheep out of his hands. And because God is good and loving and faithful, we know that his promises will stand firm forever. For that, we ought to give a million thanks every single day. And so the psalm writer reminds us not just to see the wonderful things that God has given us, but to see the one behind all the blessings. And for that, we can say thank you. A reading from Psalm 100. A psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with, uh, with reciting and confessing the first article. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God created me in all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. We continue with the prayer of the church. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. His love is everlasting. Come, let us praise God joyfully. For the good world, for things great and small, beautiful and awesome, for seen and unseen splendors. We thank you, Lord God. For human life, for talking and moving and thinking together, 
for common hopes and hardships shared from birth until our dying. We thank you, Lord God. For work to do and strength to work, for the comradeship of labor, for exchanges of good humor and encouragement. We thank you, Lord God. For marriage, for the mystery and joy of flesh made one, for mutual forgiveness and burdens shared, for secrets kept in love. For family, for living together and eating together, for family amusements and family pleasures. We thank you, Lord God. For children, for their energy and curiosity, for their brave play and startling frankness, for their sudden sympathies. We thank you, Lord God. For the young, for their high hopes, for their candid criticism, for their search for freedom and fairness. For growing up and growing old, for wisdom deepened by experience, for rest and leisure, for time made precious by its passing. We thank you, Lord God. For your help in times of doubt and sorrow, for healing our diseases, for preserving us in temptation and danger. We thank you, Lord God. For the church into which we have been called, for the good news we receive by word and sacrament. For our life together in the Lord. We praise you, Lord God. For your Holy Spirit, who guides our steps and brings us gifts of faith, hope, and love, who prays in us and prompts our grateful worship. We praise you, Lord God. Above, above all, O God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and lives again for our salvation, for our hope in him, and for the joy of serving him. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Give thanks to the Lord, who is good. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our three stanzas of Now Thank We All Our God.
Good evening once again, and happy Thanksgiving. Glad you could join us here tonight. Special thanks to all those who are able to help out in one way or another for tonight. Just a few announcements um, coming up very soon is the Lutheran Chorale concert this Sunday at 2 and 4.30. Hopefully you can come to one of those. It'll be a great way to, to kick off Advent and Christmas season. Oh yeah, and it's here. <laughs> Can't forget that. It's here. Um, there are some Advent devotionals um, available to you um, in the Welcome Center um, for right now, just stick with, if you could, just pick up one per family. That way we make sure that everybody can get one, uh, but don't forget to, to pick one up there. Um, also, midweek Advent worship service and fellowship meals. That'll be coming up here soon um, on Wednesdays for, for three Wednesdays. Um, just if you're going to come in person, it'll just be a 345 service, um, but then it also to, um, it'll be on the... Um, the website and YouTube channel as well for later on. There's a little bit of call news. If there's a, I don't know if we had a, a slide or not for that. Um, but Amanda, uh, oh, okay, no. Amanda <laughs> Gladowski has declined the call to St. Philip's, so we thank God for that. Um, but now Kelly Randall has received a call to Christ Lutheran in Big Bend, so we continue to keep. Um, St. John's in your prayers. Keep Kelly Randall in your prayers as well. Um, lots of lots of calls going in and out lately. Um, on behalf of the staff and the, the leadership at St. John's, we just want to say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, God's bless your God bless your evening and your your time tomorrow. Hopefully with safe travel and and friends and family. Have a great night. Mm -hmm.